Alrighty, what have we got? Robin... Van der Neid? Ed? Okay, Ed. How's it going, Ed? Good to see you, Ed. I think I've said Ed enough now. That should cover me for the next couple of the streams, I think. Uh, crikey. Somehow my tools section of the desk has become overgrown with tools, strangely enough. More tools. Excessive tools. Alright. Hey, Ahmed. Uh, I'm feeling pretty train wrecked here. Um, I had to spend most of the evening up to around about 9 o'clock disassembling the quail pen that I built only a few weeks ago, a couple of months ago. You now the reason why we had to disassemble it is partially because micros um, because we've had micro diagnosed with diabetes uh, at least now that we know what it is and we've got it under control relatively speaking um, yeah, we aren't relying quite so heavily on having to give him fresh produce and I'm been finding it very difficult to keep the quail um, yeah I haven't really been doing a good husbandry job with the quail so I decided I just got rid of them all I'm tearing down the pen and the reason why I'm tearing down the pen is because Loki now with his um, increased confidence in jumping out of places or onto fences and stuff like that has found that the about a meter and a half two meter gap between the top of the quail pen and the fence line is potentially jumpable from his perspective so that has to come down so anyway so that's what I was doing tonight I'm pretty wrecked my back and shoulders is pretty uh, beaten up so mostly because um, when I put the posts in it's like the fence posts a hundred mil diameter 2400 long copper logs and I bury them about 600 mil deep and I bury them pretty damn well with packed in dirt and concrete and stuff like that. It's not premixed concrete, it's just a blend, dry blend that then turns into light rock. So you try to get that out and um, it doesn't want to come out too easily. Okay, let's get on with the job. So we got a bit of a different one today. Now this is a drop off. Uh, this is a nice 17 inch Toshiva's. I've had a few of these in the past. Uh, unfortunately, they have a bad tendency. A 17 inch, this is a 15 inch, 15 inch, I'm pretty sure. Uh, so let's switch over to the overhead. Overheads, gee, it's almost too big. So we'll get this disconnected. Basically, it's come in with issues that the USB ports don't work. And why I left all my containers downstairs? Oh no, fortunately not. <sighs> I'm just going to get myself a parts container before I pull it apart too much. With these things, when you start pulling them apart, you really want to have the containers set aside so that you can just throw the goodies in and that way there's no risk of... There's no risk of you later on going, oops, is that part of the customer's machine or is that some random part of mine that fell in there things like that yeah so yeah these two ports here no activity out of them so I guess we'll crack open the board and have a look and see what we're dealing with a bit of a rare thing for me to have one of these ah Pernov is here Pernov uh, do you recognize this laptop the stickers are gone so I don't know what model it is exactly If anybody has questions about PC laptops, Pionov is extraordinarily knowledgeable. Oh, cool. Just my phone telling me that the funds for the day have been deposited into my bank account. Hey, Travis Stamper. I usually like to start from the when I orientate these machines I like to start from the back hinge and the screen hinge has been popped open there and there ok so we've got a missing screw there unless that was the one I just pulled out 
That's okay. This isn't my normal screwdriver for this sort of thing. Yeah, they're not, it's not exactly an overly recent computer, but they are a very nice machine. I do seem to have recollections though that the biggest issue I'd always run in with these, uh, I've got a couple of chassis floating around of these ones, is the PCH would die on them in a way that your um, hard drive would just start to get slower and slower. Okay, I have no idea what uh, that's CPU, uh, heat shrink, heat sink. Uh, you'll have to put up with me mangling my words a bit. What? No flipping. Good thing I didn't open and close this thing too often. There's a lot of missing screws in this. Hey Stuart Menzies, AID warp. Propaganda Blitz is back. How's it going? Hey Christian. Okay, none in that one. Okay, we've got a couple of short ones on the side. They hold the bottom frame on where the uh, DVD is. Very common to leave those in and then try and separate the frame and then yeah, it doesn't go so well usually. Usually you crack it. Okay, Pern off, thanks. Yeah, I've certainly had a couple of the PCH ones dying. Now as far as I understand the USB ports on this one um what, was gonna, what am I trying to say? <sighs> they are actually on a flex, so you're not going to see much here while I do this. This one's been maxed out with the RAM. Oh man, the uh, the cable retention, the tension maker on the FPC has been snapped out. Oh, that's no fun. I think I was pre-warned about that. I might see if I've got another board that I can steal one from, put it in. So you're just going to be in the dark for a little bit while I get these top side screws out. So it's so much more work getting into the main boards of PC laptops. And you wonder why so many of us convert over to MacBooks. Now the other problem is apparently this cable here, let's see is it sharp? Yep. This cable here when plugged in causes uh, the machine to die. That's fun and games. So without being too presumptuous I'm just going to separate get the board out and see what I've got. Come on. Okay, top deck's cleaning off. Mm -hmm. Alright, so that goes to that. Flex has been replaced. Yeah. Let's just get it all out of here. And then we can have a look top and bottom. Gives ourselves a chance of Flex wasn't actually pushed in all the way. Could it be? Could it be? Mm. 
the you probably can't quite see it there but on these a lot of these flexes is a line that's marked and that line needs to generally line up with the um, outer edge of the connector when it's pushed in as opposed to uh, when you just first insert it and it's not locked in so let's plug in everything again <laughs> oh well Let's see if we can get any USB activity off that now that I've pushed that in all the way. And I've got to find my Toshiba power brick. This one does need a bit of a heavier one, but I uh, should have one around. Goodness knows I've got a million of them. Toshiba ones are pretty much everywhere. Except when I need one now. Oops. What have we got? Uh, Acer. Got no use for an Acer. HP. You watch. I'm, I'm going to have no appropriate Shiva ones. HP, Toshiva, it's not a high enough wattage, but it might be enough though still for us to power it up. Hey Vladimir, what do you mean you need some cleaning? It's not that bad. It's pretty good by most standards. Let me guess, the on-off switch is separate flex. Where are you, on-off switch? Oh, that's what you are. From a repair perspective, I certainly do prefer to have on-off switches just as a push button on the main board. But that's just from a repair perspective. Hey Gustavo, ah, you know, late night, working, what's new? Creating a mess, of course. Okay, there's no hard drive in this, so we'll plug this in and see what happens. Immediately I've got power. I've got a screen. And I've got USB. You shit me. <laughs> no beatable device. Okay, that's possible. What are you? You're an ASD. Yeah, it probably makes sense. That's going to be an absolute laugh if that is actually what is wrong. I've still got to work out though why the other cable causes it to shut down. Let's, see, let's try this again. This should be a Ubuntu boot. Interesting. It may not be so simple yet. There could still be a fault at hand here.
Yeah, that's working. Yep. Yeah. All right, I'm calling it. It was the cable. It just wasn't pushed in far enough. <laughs> I like that. Boring as heck for you guys, but I like that. Now, the next question is why does that particular connector there cause trouble? Hey Domlel Vichio, uh, my apologies for not pronouncing this correctly. Uh, Bailey is me is here. Hey Graphics, good to see ya. Saxera. Yeah, it was um, in the end. Yeah, let's bring this into field of view. Okay, in the end, this has been replaced, and as far as I understand, the cable got replaced. But the fault turned out that. What it could have been is the original ports could have failed and then they were replaced along with the cable but unfortunately when the cable wasn't quite pushed in far enough it um, gave the illusion that there was also something else at, at play. Now supposedly there's a problem here with this uh, cable it caused it to shut down or misbehave so if we look at that, that's the eco button. Kind of curious what the eco button's purpose is. Yeah, fancy speaks for sure. Uh, we're running out of room here. Everything's so much bigger on PCs. I need to get more height. Okay, that could be the fault. See, it's been crushed and it's actually exposed a strand. Now, if we try and trace where that crush is, let's see, it's on this screw hole just before it comes out. Which is there? Take that away. It's a ground plane. So that's what's happening there. Got pinched, and being the red one, shorted to ground, shuts it down. So what happened here is instead of it being routed into this little little nook here. It's been sitting on the top and it's been bitten. So that's what caused that. So the question is how am I going to fix this up? I guess uh, some... Yeah. I mean really it's not an important thing to have but really should fix it up nonetheless. Some hot glue? What do you guys reckon? What's your recommendation for this? We don't really want to have to pull the pins out and then individually heat shrink them. Especially that it's all done up with hot glue. Could just replace the whole flex, but I don't have a replacement for that. Liquid tape? Hmm. Yeah, I'd probably be going the hot glue option myself. I don't have any liquid tape. I used to have liquid tape. I used it a fair bit in manufacturing, even though it was probably naughty to do that. The only trouble with hot glue is it doesn't really... It doesn't really sort of flow as well as I like over this. I can't use UV Cure because it's too brittle. So, yeah... Hot glue glob, I guess, is the only real way. The green one is almost biting through. It's not quite, but yeah, it also has been definitely damaged. Oh, wait, no, yep, there is a tiny two little specks of exposure there. But yeah, I would have basically done the whole lot. 
as a blob and then put it back in in fact I probably could put it just back like that but I think we should try and fix that up cut off the excess foil what are you talking about the fold over this sort of bit here yeah it seems to be nested in there okay it's, uh, I think it would have been fine if it wasn't for the fact that it yeah, if it wasn't for the fact that the cable got caught under there and chowed through. Liquid tape definitely would have been the best option, but it's not an option I've got. Well, it's definitely an interesting change in faults. Not my normal sort of range of things that I do. It's been a long time since I've done anything with PCs. As in, yeah, PC laptops. Now, I don't even have insulation tape, funnily enough. JB World, B7000. Blue stick. Yeah, we'll use blue stick. That'll work. Conductive tape. That'll definitely work. Hot glue it is. I'm just not prepared for that sort of fault, that's the problem. And where did I put my hot glue gun? I put my hot glue gun downstairs. Yay! At least I'm pretty sure I have. I've got Tessa tape. <laughs> nah. I should have bought a roll of something like uh, wrap around self amalgamating tape. That probably would have worked nicely. James May would use a condom. Uh, well, I guess if he's not going to use it for anything else. Why did they have to. If they hadn't have put hot glue into this, then I would have just popped that right out and slipped some heat shrink over those. Still tempting. I could always splice the line. No, don't splice it. Why not? Hmm. The trouble with splicing is, of course, it leaves you a little bit short. Let's see if I can pick this out. Let's find a tool that I can use to pick the clear goop out. Yeah, what have I missed here? E-Digit.com Do you have a software to use the BK390 auto ranging on OBS? Oh, right, yeah. Thanks, Pernoff. Hey, Stray77. Uh, AK47, I would guess most likely it will not behave that way. I find more often than not when you try your luck with heating these things up, they just behave even worse. Okay, this isn't hot glue, this is something else. This is something quite a bit harder. So, I don't think that's going to be an option. Nope, that one's out. Well, I, I can splice the line it will cause them all to buckle out a little bit. But at least it would be covered. Transparent office tape. Now, see, now we're really, really going for the low end of the barrel there. Uh, now, if I do go with heat shrink, I need to find stuff that is going to work because you do need to have a reasonable uh, degree of conformancy to the size that you want to heat shrink down to and unfortunately most of my heat shrink is all the usual 2 to 1 ratio 
you can get 3 to 1 ratio shrink that's quite a bit more expensive but it is useful in these situations guess who cleaned up their office the other day and now doesn't know where they put all those all that clear heat shrink if there's any if there's one thing people should learn from our videos is don't clean up your office you will forget where everything is suppose the other way you could look at it is if you clean up your office properly and have everything organized then you will know where everything is I don't know how people have any time for that sort of thing it'd be nice to have that luxury alright where's my wires box wires Probably going to be no suitable heat shrink in this. Hmm. Not yet. No. Likewise, anything you throw out will be needed within a week of you throwing it out. What a jerk. What a complete another jerk. Damn it. Alright, I'm going to go get the hot glue gun from upstairs and I'll be back. Heat up, clear office tape, add a few layers. <laughs> I don't think so. Yep. Okay, Gustavo, good luck with your stream. Yep, yeah, alright. I'm just going to go get the hot glue gun and I'll be back. Okay, it won't be long. Alright, got our hot glue. Put that on. Give it a minute or two. Actually, it's probably going to be like five minutes. Keep thinking you might need to utilize that boring corner that's behind you in all the shots of the shelving system you have organized. Yeah, I agree. It needs to all just be cleaned up. But you're absolutely right. I do have enough space around here, but I am. Uh, utilizing it very poorly. I absolutely agree. Well, this is certainly not the sort of job that I thought it was going to be. Look at that, that's a broken standoff. That's the sort of thing you JB world. So this thing's seen a couple of wars ah uh, I need this screwdriver a bit I lost mine tonight when I was out in the dark in the back up pulling down the Avery 
one second I'm taking screws out, the next second I've lost my bit. And uh, despite looking around in the dark with the big torch, I couldn't find it. Off to the magical land where all the other bits go. How do you set up the GitHub software into OBS? Uh, I'm not sure what you mean by that. E-dodge it? E-digit, sorry. Let's see, I'm gaslighting myself. Yeah, someone's got to gaslight me, propaganda. Yeah, it's true propaganda, I suppose, you know, you can get away with anything. I have done videos before of cleaning up this workshop, back when it, we put the shelving in and everything was pristine and lovely. That lasted for maybe two or three days. Who has time to organize your space in order for you to use your time more wisely? Um, I think, and it's not even as if I'm actually that busy. Um, somehow or another, the days just, you know, disappear on me. I think more of my greater resource limitation is just the um, drive. You may find it the magnet. Yes. Um, yeah, you're right, Catherine. I was going to take, I've got a fairly large neomibdium magnet. I don't know if I'm saying that right. And I'll just go and when I go out there tomorrow, I'll fish around with it. Hopefully, I'll find it. Hey, Gazman44. Is the workshop out solid? No, it's all, oh, it's, you know, the window's right behind me, but it's not really outside. It's pretty warm even in winter here. Hey, David Legault, good to see you. Uh, yeah, Murphy's Law is the one that pretty much anything you don't want to happen will happen. Hey, Mansoor. Uh, yep, Daniel, I've been going non-stop for my streaming here. No, <laughs> obviously I have had a chance to take a break. I've been busy doing other things, and now I'm back at it. I do want to see if I can find a piece of heat shrink that I can... No, this should do it. I'll slip over the outside of that sheath. Let's see... Let's see if this will work. This is a quarter inch from what I can estimate. Naturally, it's just fractionally a little bit too small. And naturally, I'll get it about three quarters of the way over and then find I can't get it any further. Let's see, where are my nice fine point nose tweezers? Not tweezers, pliers. There we go. Okay. You haven't even finished the last stream. Well, the last stream is far more interesting than what this one has been. Something I was supposed to say about the last stream too. Oh yes, yeah, so I went back through the video and um, when I was worried at the end about the little antenna board, not the one that I just found floating around, um, I checked back on the video and fortunately I had, that antenna board came from another board entirely. It wasn't from um, the one that I was repairing. Uh, propaganda, not quite yet solved with Loki. Uh, I know what I'm trying to do with the shed, but I need to get some self-tapping sheet metal screws and a couple of other things so that I can affix the sort of the um, interrupter barrier onto the top of the shed roof. There isn't the trouble with the sheds is that there's only about a two inch overhang on the uh, on the roof relative to the wall. So what he does is he scales up the wall and then he grabs on to the cap strip that's on the end of the tin roof 
sheeting and now the cap strip's supposed to be there to stop you hurting yourself if you bump into the shed or anything like that because the roof is only at about six foot um, but it's that cap strip that he's grabbing onto and then hauling himself up on so what I'm gonna do is I've got the mesh that I use for all the fencing around the place and I'm going to take about a 400 mil wide strip of that fence I'll bend up about 100 mil, 75 to 100 mil of that um, at one end so that will sit on the lip of the roof uh, sort of like the last two inches of the roof and then the bend up so it will uh, will go back up into the air as it were so we don't run into it with our head and hopefully even though he will still be able to grab onto the end cap he will sort of be stuck in a situation where he's like I can't get any higher because this interrupting uh, mesh is in the way that's the theory whether it pans out I don't know these things you just got to try I just like trying to fix up this cable uh, I'm gonna raise this up again Okay, I should be able to just hot glue that as is. And then we'll do our magic in a little bit. Yeah, I don't know if I'm going to have to insulate each one. I think I can get away without doing that. Under normal circumstances, I'd be worried about it, but I'm fairly sure I can get away with this. I just want to wait for that to cool down a bit. The trick with hot glue is to not try and mess around with it too much until it's cooled off. I'm not finished with this process yet. I've still got another step or two to go. Uh, Catherine, well at the moment all our perimeter fences are built like that so they have the um, have about a six foot vertical section and then I fold inwards the last sort of 600 millimeter I'm mixing my metric and imperial here um, but yeah the way I build them there's about a 600 millimeter two foot uh, excess up the top and that gets folded in either horizontal or sometimes even slightly negative downwards and that stops them very much so but with the shed it's just a little bit of a trickier situation all right so that's that now let's get our hot air That should do the trick nicely. Hey BDR in Syria, good to see you. Hey Greg, do you have to put the GitHub software in some folder OVS to make OVS? Um, e Digit, no, you just have to build the meter software and then run it separately and then do a screen capture for a, um, uh, yeah just a window capture that's what I was after yeah ZX definitely hot glue way to go uh, let's see did you go to college or university to learn electronics well I did go to university and but not really for the electronics and most of this stuff is not yeah, this is the fun bit. It's not going to route in nicely. So I may have to revisit this theory. Anyway, you generally don't go to university to do this sort of stuff. Damn it. My green theory hasn't panned out here because I don't have enough room. 
Sí, no, no, no. I can try to soften it up and route it in there again. Uh, I'll just try to soften it up first before I go try anything else. Sweet Bridget, that's not soft, that's boiling hot. It's also very messy now. It looks so pretty before. Now it's ugly. Get a big hammer? I like that idea. Anyway, um, the, you don't really go to university. If you're going to university to learn how to program, you're going to university for the wrong reasons. It's as simple as that. It's, you don't learn programming at university. At least, not in the way that most people sort of are thinking. You learn how to instead um, design programs and things like that, but... Uh, man, I really... You also learn how to not do these things right. All this for a freaking eco button that no one ever uses. I just want to see if I can even get it in. Okay, I can get it in. It will sit there, so that's good. I mean, uh, technically a true... I say true, but I mean, I suppose I'm biased, but a true computer science degree as such is really a degree of... Um, it's a constrained mathematics degree. It's not a programming degree or anything like that. If you're if you're going there to learn programming or you think you'll learn programming, sure you will get taught programming, but merely like a carpenter is taught how to use a hammer. It's like it's just a tool. It's not really the purpose of the university. Is this actually broken off or is it yep, that's clean broken off. Oh yeah, that is too right. Okay, I'm going to see if I've got another board and steal one of those off. To be fair, I don't even know if you can take those out and reuse them. But I guess I'm going to find out. The chances of me finding another one of those is about oh, 0.0001%. But oh look. Uh, here we go. Here's one. No, just kidding. I don't know if it is, but <laughs> it looks pretty damn similar. It might just be. What are the chances of that? Let's see if we can actually get it out without destroying it. Yeah, basically, if you go to university, well, computer science, you should be going there to teach you how to do things like how to write better compilers or how to optimize an operating system scheduling algorithm to suit particular workloads. Yeah, that sort of stuff. The stuff that drives people, or the stuff that people are using when they're, you hope, um, doing kernel design or 
you know, optimi that sort of thing. It's not general programming. Come on, you've got to be able to come out. What if I just break that off? Let's see. A bit of high speed dremeling, maybe? The pen off, I've noticed that as well. Uh, which is a shame because really I think it was because there was a stigma certainly in the 90s there was a fair bit of a stigma on I'm just going to turn this up uh, on anything practical or yeah basically everybody had to go to university if you didn't go to university you were a failure or something like that you know and so a lot of people went through school desperately trying to get to university, but really it was the wrong place for them. And so now we've got this real problem of not enough practically skilled people. Yeah, that's out. I guess it's the whole pendulum effect. Yeah, maybe there's an easier way to get this out, but... <sighs> yeah, I never understood why people um, look down on trades because at the end of the day <laughs> a lot of people are paying a lot more on a daily basis for tradespeople like plumbers, carpenters all that sort of stuff they're not cheap but on the other hand programmers dime a dozen and get away with paying programmers absolute peanuts. Uh, we didn't even check to see if this was actually the right width. I just made an assumption because it looked like it was a screen connector. might not be an equivalent match yeah they are a bit different not majorly but they are a bit different sort of just hoping that maybe they're similar enough I just can't seem to find the hole Kind of find the hole on that. Just turns around. Crap, I just broke it. Uh, wasn't a perfect match. Uh, might have to see if I can find another one.
Is that use the old one? What's this? It will hold when the ribbon's in place. Yeah, I guess it will. I was just sort of hoping to see if at least I could find a nicer one. It's a keyboard connector, that's what it is. The question is, now I don't know what I've done with the old one. I'll just check my board bin again. Let's see, flip, no, no good for you. Definitely no good for you. Maybe similar, but probably not. Most definitely not similar. Unquestionably not similar. No, strange board that I've never seen before, but apparently I have in my collection. Yeah, I was going to throw all this big box of boards out. Probably still should. Really can't see it being much use. Lots of flip ones. Absolutely no shortage of flip ones. Ooh, 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 ooh. Maybe, maybe, maybe. Hey, Vogon. Yeah, maybe we might have a match here. Maybe. Do the same trick, dremel it out. Yeah, this one actually looks a little more promising. Yeah, I'm it, I am. I am. I don't need my reasons. I just am. Uh, Switzerland's a lovely country. Yeah. Aha, we have a winner, I think. Yeah, I guess we'll find out when we put the keyboard back on, won't we? 
Yeah, the Swiss are generally very good for handling multiple languages. I've been over there, and other than knowing a bit of um, Afrikaans, I didn't really have no much else. And English, of course. What do you want from me? And I had no trouble getting around. Great food. Really had a good time there. Am I a South African? Uh, no. I just worked there for several years. Absolutely loved my time over there. Yeah, it was definitely... Yeah, some in life you have certain events that define your sort of life a little... You're quite... There's more pinched cables there. That's another defining moment. Yeah, that cable is supposed to not route that way. It's supposed to go over slightly. Anyway, I was over there doing a lot of work in the IT industry. And it was you know, my early to... Well, yeah, my early to late 20s, I was over there. Mid to late 20s, so. And definitely an experience that is pretty much irreplaceable. Well worth it. I walked out of there at the end of the day with pretty much no financial gain. I lost a lot of things when I had to leave in a hurry. wasn't able to maximize my sale of my house or my precious little BMW. I do miss my BMW. I want that damn car back so bad. It was a E46 320i. Nice maroon, red color, sunroof. It was just a great car. It was, I had a lot of happy memories in that thing. Cruising around the South African country, going off to various jobs, fixing things up. Free man. Someone's got a flaming war going on. What have we got a flaming war going on for? Yeah, we're definitely not going to have flaming wars in here. This will be some flaming kicking. Yep. Time out time? Oh, sounds like someone's getting naughty. I'll leave the mods to do their mod works. So, will this fit in? Or not? I'm just trying to fit that keyboard flex in. I have a feeling that oh, maybe it's a ground runner. Nope. Did I insert that clip upside down, perhaps? <laughs> I'm fairly sure that's the right way up. I can't see it having fit in the other way. Let's see, but oh yeah, actually maybe it can. Yeah, oh yeah, my bad. Oh yeah, fits much better now. Huh. Well, yeah. what do you know? I did the dodgy. Very much did the dodgy. <laughs> I can't do it with the microscope in the way. Get out of here. 
Uh, let me catch up on chat before I do this. Dun, dun, dun. Shiva is a solid laptop. Well, they certainly were for a while, and then something went horribly wrong, and they started to most definitely not be a good laptop. They seem to have they sold themselves out at some point. I mean, prior to recent things, about the only bad thing that really happened to a Toshiba laptop was your uh, NEC token caps. Okay, why don't you want to go in? Yeah, that's good. Yep, that that clip's a perfect fit now. I'll just put the backlight one in. Oh, show you guys under the microscope. Uh, so that's a good fit now, I think. I think. It's certainly in a f fair way. Yep, it was in a fair way until I messed with it. Well, that's what I get for showing people things. Now I've got to squeeze it back in. There we go. And I also need to put the screws back in, which I should have done before I put the keyboard in. Everything's out of order, I do apologise. Please stand by. But certainly around here for a long time, if anyone asks me what brand of laptop to get, then Toshiba was definitely up there on the top of my list and then we started getting some things like the entry-level C50s and then Toshiba started building uh, keyboards into the top deck completely so that it wasn't the replaceable keyboard business just yeah those sort of moves those sort of where trimming the corners type stuff and it was like yeah Looks like the time of the Toshiba is over. Okay, I feel like I've got another pinch cable under here, by the way. Which means I'm going to have to now re undo everything. I get the feeling that what's happened here is this thing's been disassembled and reassembled quite a few times. And as a consequence, the cables aren't being routed the right way. But you don't really know until you take it off. I wonder if I can do this without the keyboard pulling out. <laughs> yeah, no, I gotta do the keyboard out. Bugger. Is it? It's the uh, let me pull this one out now. Uh, how many times do I have to do these things? Honestly, it's almost as bad as the twelve seventy eight. Uh, someone didn't bring a hairband down. Okay. Okay, we've got another cable pinch situation here. The question is, uh, where is that supposed to have routed? I get a feeling this could have been... Sometimes you get cables and they route them under the board for a little bit. Um, it'll 
bit disappointed in myself for not seeing that earlier. I guess we'll inspect where it did get crushed and just see if we have any damage we need to repair. Okay, so this is the crush point. Well, it's just like looking at Play-Doh that's being crushed together. <coughs> seems to be the theme of this computer. Well, they're not ideal, but it doesn't look like they're shorted, but it's certainly not ideal, but I'm not going to at this point go out of my way to mess with that. I do get the feeling that it should have been routed beneath the board at some point and then come up by the fan. Kind of like that. The power flex I'm not sure about on this model. It doesn't really want to go down there. It feels like you belong down there instead. And then maybe you just press over the top, maybe. Hey, Evo, Amos. Hey, nuts and proud. You got the same problem? Broken flex ribbon cable socket won't latch down an Acer laptop. Yeah. Now you can always replace the whole thing. I was getting to that point that I thought I might have to do that with this. Long hair, I tell you folks. It's all fun and games until it gets in your face all the time and then you then you regret it. Okay, let's try this again. See maybe this time we can keep it in one piece. Okay, you're plugged. You're plugged and you are not crushing anything. This screw is actually the wrong type and size, but it does have the right thread and it is slightly shorter than the ones it's supposed to it's replacing. Since it threads in okay, it doesn't bottom out or anything like that. I'm going to allow it. Oh, where's that keyboard gone? Oh, there it is. Tried to find an SMD socket, no joy. Can you find anything? I guess as long as it's got the same pitch, the same, uh, the contacts are on the same side, that is something that catches you out occasionally, where th these connectors can sometimes be biased top or bottom. Some of them are um, unbiased, as in you know, no matter, the contacts are sort of more like little forks and they go either side of the cable. But yeah, you definitely get ones that are top or bottom specific. But yeah, if you find the same pin count and pitch, then you've got a pretty good chance of replacing it.
Yeah, there's some... There's a push-up clip in here somewhere that... Yeah, I don't know where it is. It's right there. Normally you should be able to just press down and it locks in. But it's not doing that. Fantastic. Yeah, the keyboard's connected. But the trouble is there's a little clip that locks them down. And it hasn't actually gotten into the chassis. There we go. Let's see if you look at this thing here. Okay, it looks like it's a push down and slide on this one. Okay, that's better. With some of them, they use a um, like a metal sort of pair of tongs like that, or plastic sort of clasps like that, and then on the keyboard, there's a slight uh, bevel on the little pin that wants to lock in. But in this one, there was neither of those. It was actual pushing, slide back, and it was good. So that's fine. That's set. Let's turn this thing over now. Get off. I will gladly debate that this laptop is... Well, I wouldn't know if i call it a proper laptop. Uh, it's pretty close. I'm just looking for my tweezers. There they go. My favourite tweezers. Oh, someone's really mashing into that. <laughs> Looks like someone tried to get that out, but decided, nope, that's not happening. I know I've had a few do that, as in, you try to get these modules out, and those screws are locked in somehow. Alright. Yeah, we've got a real mishmash of screws here. These are definitely not all the same. I'm fairly sure by design they're supposed to be, but... What do we got? Yep, we got no nothing there. Yep, this is gonna be fun. Yeah, this laptop is a little bit old. It was certainly a good laptop in its time, but it is old now. This is an i7 one. I don't know what this is. The second or third generation? Third generation, didn't you say, Pianov? i7 3000 series or something?
Yeah, the old ball of screws. I hate it though sometimes when you're putting a screw in and then you just sort of feel, you're like, oh, that doesn't feel quite right. And you wonder whether you're either cross-threading something or you're dealing with a previously cross-threaded item or whether you're starting to punch a nice little dimple into the other side of the uh, case. Oh, that actually... Okay. This back hinge does have a thread, but this one does not seem to have a or does it? Yeah, that one's blown through. Alright. Let's put the This should normally be a little three mil or something. Oops, seems fine with that. Hey, Jace McDonald. Oh, thanks. Okay, yeah, I'm up a bit late, I agree. Okay. So, yeah, I can decide how I'm going to do this. So we'll get our test USB stick. Get our power. Oops. Okay, charging. Oh, there's no charging because it doesn't have battery in. Leaders of innovation. Let's see. Run ESET rescue. Sure. Thanks, Greg. You're on the ball, as always. Thank you. Well, at least we know if there's an eco button, it's not shorting out, so that's a win. A trackpad works. Let's see. Enable live grid? Sure, why not? Sure. I accept the terms and conditions? Sure. And wireless is working. Not something you guys can see. There you go. Let's see. For network A, my password is, I'm pretty sure, 1234567. maybe? I don't know. I can't remember. Or maybe it's 1. Or maybe it's 5. Oh, doesn't matter. Thing is, the unit's working. And we're definitely working off that USB stick there. Let's plug in another drive, just to verify that both ports are good. And we are showing power on that one. Let's see... And... Okay, that's fine. Okay, so it is showing that that drive I just plugged in is there. Let's see if we can get a terminal. Let's see, accessories. Terminal. We had D message. No. D message minus W capital H. What? Tail minus F varvog syslog. What?
spending too much time chewing away on that deep Wi-Fi. Maybe there's nothing on this hard drive. I'll try a different. Th it should still show up a device though. Maybe I've just got. Maybe that cable didn't quite get plugged in again. Hmm. Okay, well, there's one way to prove this one way or another. All we have to do is boot from that alternate port. Come on, shut down already. Thank you. Okay, plugged into the alternate port. Powering on. And that's working. I suppose now what I should do is plug in the windows that's on this and verify that the problem that it was experiencing has in fact gone. Shut down. You've got to be fairly pedantic with these sort of faults. You know, taking it all the way back to whatever it was that the customer brought it in saying they were experiencing. Because some type, yeah, it's possible that maybe in addition to the um, cable, you know, maybe we missed something else or maybe we lied to ourselves and it really is something else. Okay. Anyway, I guess my point is it's certainly important to quadruple check everything. Why aren't you going in? The orientation's right. It just doesn't want to go in. Maybe I'll do it this way. Except now, then that back side's a little too high. Really? Are we doing this? I'm actually fighting, trying to get a solid state drive in there. What's going on? Get a nasty kick there. Just take these side screws out and see if that's what's obstructing. No, it's not upside down, that's the thing. Look, we've got small connector there, small connector there. Yeah, it's these, it's those screws, they're too fat. Well, maybe it wants me to use more force than I'm willing to use. I see there's sort of retainer clip type things there. Which could explain why it's dented in. But from what I recall, usually these have a lower profile screw head. So I'm going to leave that out for now. At least it sits in properly now. Yeah, it's... It's the heads on these, they're just too broad. Anyway, since solid state drives don't get upset by the mechanical vibration so much, 
and they all say way substantially less, then I think we can just leave those out and hand them to the customer. Uh, I see the channel is degenerating into teen schoolyard chatter, which is awesome. <coughs> okay, now I'm going to have to unfortunately obstruct the display here. Great, I didn't ask what the user's password was. Oh well. Alright, now I just need to find something that I can plug in. Not a PS2 mouse, that's not right. I'm going to use... Just say, Mr. Lewis, cat tax, kitty knees, braces. I'm not even sure what that means. What do you mean? Your kitty need braces? Thank you very much, Martin. That's, as Lewis would say, far more than what I'm worth, but thank you. Okay. That doesn't make my brunk noise. What about this side? No brunk noise? I can't believe I forgot to ask this person what oh six zeros maybe. That'll be it. Well that's me taking it out. Okay, that's working. It wasn't doing that before. Okay, so we're fixed. And in the end, this is a very generic setup, so we were all good. So we're fixed. Didn't even have to heat up the soldering iron for that. Uh, that's a bit disappointing, isn't it? Okay, shut down. I uh, don't try to make the comedy out of this. I think, unfortunately, the brain just often says things that uh, it doesn't think about. It's sort of like the stuff that comes out when you're having dinner with your in-laws. Well, actually, no, that didn't really happen to me. It rather happened with my wife. We were, um, yeah, maybe I'll get in trouble if I say this. Probably will. Not even reflowing CPU. Agreed, Pernoff. Agreed. It didn't even get to do that. I'm just glad that's fixed, though. And I guess because it was didn't end up costing too much to fix. I'm not going to put that back into it. Right there. Unfortunately, I have parents that are rather entertaining and amusing, so all is good. But, uh, yeah, we're having a Christmas dinner many many years ago and uh, there were cupcakes for some reason at this Christmas dinner uh, and the cupcakes normally have paper wrapping around cupcakes but this time we used um, we're trying out silicon molds that's right and the maybe we didn't wash them properly or something like that but uh, anyway so we're eating these and then my wife sort of comments, she says, oh, yeah, sorry about the flavour and all that. Yeah, it's a bit off and all that. You know, it's from the silicon moulds. And um, she says, you know, it kind of tastes like booty. And then we realised right then what had been said. And it's like, it's like whoops, so, yeah, didn't really make mean to make that connotation. So, um, yeah, my father, myself and my wife were all just trying to hold it together and not burst out laughing. Unfortunately, my mother... She's got more of a hearing issue than I have. 
And so she naturally was wondering what the hell we were all just laughing our heads off about. But um, yeah, so that was fun things to say at Christmas dinner. Uh, tastes like booty. That was a good one. We have plenty of other ones like that. But, um, yeah, certainly makes you laugh. Don't have many visitors at the way of like that anymore. Mostly because we've got the house in lockdown. Um, you know, with the fur kids, and uh, naturally we've got fur kids that have anxiety issues, so having extra people around is not a good idea. Funnily enough, we do have one cat who's the oldest one that we have now, Lulu. If she knows that there's been visitors and she hasn't had a chance to meet and greet them, she gets quite angry and she takes it out on everybody. She's like, why didn't you let me see those people? Why didn't you let me talk to them? Why didn't you let me get pats from them? So, uh, yeah, it's a bit of a funny mix. You love me more than Oreo. Well, you know, according to what I hear about Oreo, a lot of people don't like Oreo that much, so I'm not sure if that's a high standard. Uh, so, oh, someone bought a copy of Flex Board View. Awesome, 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 awesome. Always like to see that. So, where's the time? It's half past 12 at night. I don't know if I've got anything else that needs fixing up. What I was going to do is um, I've got some A1502 type boards and I was going to risk my own personal A1502 chassis to see if I can fix them up. But I don't know if that's a good idea because, I mean, those 1502s still sell for $700 second hand. Rick Turk, I have a cat here that's not even mine. Oh, you got a visitor. Cats usually have three or four families sometimes. My siblings and I tortured my parents until they just accepted the language. <laughs> I think most of the time growing up, the dinners were dominated typically by my sister who was doing a nursing degree, a practical nursing degree back then, and listening to all the... Um, various medical events that were happening at work for her each day and that, that's quite a uh, enlightening conversation it makes it a little difficult to eat things at times but it's definitely um, entertaining not work where it's schematic uh, fair enough i actually got my money on that one if you're referring to that comment that you saw on my rant I don't know what happened exactly, but you know I kept feeding PayPal the information, uh, trying to explain that I'm trying to support the person, and then all of a sudden it came through. So I won on that. I didn't shouldn't say I won. It, I think the person worked out what they were doing, and now it's fixed up. Why do I need some practice on MacBooks? Thing is, eBay stupid prices. People have the same idea. Any other options? Just keep trying eBay. Try and um, find someone. A machine that everybody's forgotten about it happens rarely these days but um, yeah, just keep low bidding and one day one of them will come through does Queensland do daylight savings absolutely not thank God I can sort of understand Brisbane wanting Brisbane Gold Coast wanting to do it because of the proximity of New South Wales but it's ridiculous to do it up here I mean we're inland relative to Brisbane we're quite a bit further west and so, if you do daylight savings up here, it's you know, 8, 9 o'clock before the sun goes down. It's just no good. I have a part-time cat. My neighbor's cat comes around to my place when the kids are in. Kids torment the cat. I hate that when kids torment cats. Yeah, I'm glad at least it's got your place to go to, so thank you for that. Hey, Farphone, how's it going? Jaco Sky 11 what happens after you die? Good question. Don't know. Um, the rational analytical side of me sort of says we basically just nothing but then I sort of think about the start of the universe and no matter how you try to conceptualize the start of the universe or the boundaries of the universe there's always the problem of something beyond the limit the edge and then how did this come to be you know what was the start that sort of thing makes me sort of think maybe there's something we're completely missing here but even then if you decide okay there's a system outside of our system you then wonder well what's outside of that system it's one of those infinity brain breakers so i really don't know 
Do you like fantasy books like Tree of Love? Ah, Farfane, you've been digging around. That's my wife's writing. Um, we've done quite a few books. I just haven't had a chance lately to publish any more. We do have a few more we need to get around to um, cleaning up and putting out there, but it's a lot of hard work and it's um, work that you have to do, how can I say, um, you have to do it without taking a break because otherwise you forget what things you're supposed to be editing, you, you, you lose your flow. It's kind of like programming. Hey, Johan Boysen. Just started a nice fire for a brine in South Africa, a town called Nolspreit, 50 kilometers from Kruger National Park. Well, Johan, um, I actually used to do work in Nolspreit, so I know exactly where you are. I used to drive from Pretoria out to Nolspreit quite a few bit. I was doing some IT work on the new toll, um, well, it's not new anymore, it's got 20 odd years old now. Um, the new toll road booth area that was going off to Mozambique. Anyway, have some bultongs, sup and, uh, pup and salves for me, will you please? Bye, thank you. Oh, and um, what is it? Is it Castle Cider? I used to, no, Castle's the beer brand. What's the cider brand? Uh, Hunters. Hunters, that's it. I used to love that stuff. Can of Hunters, pup and sauce, waiting for the poiki to cook on the braai. And if you're lucky, you stay sober enough, long enough to finally get to taste the poiki at the end of the night. Most of the time you pass out before the poiki's ready. Or some dumbass goes along and stirs the poiki. That's sacrilegious. You can't stir the poiki. Not allowed to do that. Let's see, what are your thoughts on the Librem 5 Linux phone? I actually haven't seen it. Um, I'd be very curious to see it because it'd be nice to finally have a system that isn't encumbered by all the layers on top. So, but then again, it depends. Maybe they have encumbered it anyway. Loki waiting on Rossman's Guide to Real Estate. Yeah, that'd be interesting. But that's probably New York specific, but yeah. Turtle or elephants all the way down, yep. A few pounds of brain cannot properly grasp the infinity of the universe, therefore it concludes a limit. What's a poiki? Okay, it's spelled P-O-T-J-I-E. It's um, like a witch's brew pot. It's a big cast iron thing. You stick it on your coals and it's quite the art to do them right. Let's see... South African Poiki. Okay, let's see if I can get this right. Here we go. So this is a Poiki. And basically, there yeah, you have to not mess with it. The whole trick of the Poiki is that it's a low, um, low effort stew casserole type meal. You just leave it there, you put your layers on at the appropriate times, and then right at the end, that's when you stir it up and then serve it out. I was down memory lane, and I was very interested in how you progr progressed in video production. Uh, what do you use now? Um, uh, well, for now, I'm obviously using Open Broadcaster. Uh, for editing, I'm just using Shotcut. Shotcut. But now that I've got my 27-inch iMac, I'm probably going to use iMovie or something like that. How goes high DPI support for FlexBoard View? Um, in the actual FlexBoard View program itself, it's fine, but there are problems I've noticed with the PDF on some systems. The big problem with the PDF engine at the moment is that it renders the full page. So if you're on a high DPI system, that's going to really tax your system a lot. Um, the upside of rendering the page completely is though if you do need to pan around in the page, it's already rendered, since you're only just moving amongst that one fixed memory map. So it's uh, faster in that way. Let's see... And it seems like Johan's gone off for a Hunter's or a Castle beer or something and won't be coming back. Uh, no, it's not a 5K one. It's just the um, T560 by 
1441s or whatever. It's a 2012, I think, or 2013. I put a one terabyte solid state drive in it. It's good. I really like it. It's a nice machine to have. It um, doesn't give me any trouble. Justin Anderson, did you fix your octopus cable? Yes, I did. I didn't put a proper fuse into it. I've ordered some fuses for it, but um, the 3 amp fast blow I've got in there, it's doing fine now. So that's what it was. It was just a the poly fuse. I'm guessing it must have got hit with an over voltage, something like 20 volts maybe, when I was stuffing around with the power supply. And that probably damaged it. So, yeah. Uh, GDK5 is better than four for high DPI. All right, I'll have to try. I'm not actually doing any like um, system level high DPI calls or anything like that. But with Flexboard View itself, what I do is there's a DPI setting in the um, setup. So if you do have a screen that's say 200 DPI, you can set it rather than the normal 96 or whatever. Zero effect. How did you decide on the Flexboard View name? The flex portion of it comes from my um, alias name, which is Inflex, um, from IRC days. We're talking like from the early mid 90s. I'd call myself Inflex. The Inflex name came from um, when I created. It was going through changes in my life. Who doesn't go through changes in my life? Oh man, it sounds like such a drama story. I may as well be a mukbanger with a big 20-minute drama entry uh, talk and then I'll get down to eating food. Seems to be the trend these days. Um, so Inflex was sure for inflection uh, and, and so uh, that's sort of, you know how these things happen in life, you just sort of stumble into the stuff. But yeah, IRC, I started IRC around about 95, yeah about 1995 and then 1996 that's when I bumped into some people who were in South Africa and they were, funnily enough, in the Australian Adelaide channel on Osnet. And that's how I got the job offer. And then I went off to South Africa. Yeah, real cascade of things, as mo thing most things are. Yeah, the schematics. Uh, nope. No schematics. No schematics. Nothing free. <laughs> it needs to be a mem. It does need to be a mem. BBSing, yes, I used to use BBSs. Oh, then this nose scratch away. I don't know. Maybe it's something with the latex. I don't know where these are. These are uh, what do you call that stuff? Nitrile or whatever. Um, BBSs, yes. When I started getting online, I bought myself a Banksia 1200 BPS in card, uh, in computer ISA card. That was for my IBM XT. And I think that cost me like a hundred and twenty dollars, and that was a fair bit of money back then. And I was lucky there was a couple of local BBSs around, so I spent a fair bit of time on that. Our school had one as well. Uh, and then of course you get on FidoNet, and then you become part of that whole group. And you know, every morning you or every day you um, call in, and you get your big lump of messages from all over the world. And you send them out. So back then it'd be like three or four days it'd take for a message to get we're out of sync. Crap. All right. A hiding place. Twenty four hundred million. Uh, all right. Let me just fix that quickly and then I'll say goodbye. Okay. So this should be a bit better now that we um, got back on the sync and just for me to say goodbye. So it is getting late, and uh, it's been a hard day, and tomorrow I've got to go out there and do more work on the yard and fix that uh, shed so that Loki can't do the flying escape that he wants to. He's been on there now before times he's gotten up on that uh, shed, and three times while we've been watching him, we thought we'll try and give him some time out in the yard to, you know, so he doesn't get too angsty. Um, and he is lightning fast. There's no pause with him. You know, he just goes straight for the shed, boom, strut, up and over. Fortunately, we can get him back off there, but it, it does take a, it's a two person job to try and distract him enough to be able to get him off the shed. So hopefully I can get that fixed up tomorrow and we can go back to relaxing a little bit. So, um, you lose me completely? No image gone. Ah. Okay, hang on.
Am I completely gone? Crap. Yeah, I don't know why that's happened. Can anyone actually hear me? No? Okay, I think I'm back. Am I back? No, oh, let's clap again. No, no good. Damn. 